that came at, uh, at Lingfield, but it was only over a mile and a half, and I think the way he ran that day certainly suggested that another step up in trip would be very much in his favour, Mon Frere. So, relatively exposed and has to be of interest, as indeed does this horse here behind the camera, number two. Uh, Bird for Life, who, unlike some of these, is at least consistent, was second over two miles at Kempton, that coming off a break, and is only one pound higher, so with Ellie McKenzie taking off the seven, another horse that has to be of interest. And number five here, just walking into shot, well, that's Knight Commander, who likes to go from the front. Not many of these do, so, you know, there's every chance that Knight Commander could get a slightly easy lead here. Uh, this horse was only beaten a neck, and that was in class four company, uh, over course and distance here at Wolverhampton in April. So we know track and trip is no kind of issue at all. And now this horse is two pounds lower and comes here on the back of a good run at Chepstow last time out. Well, if you had the chance to see Mon Friere's run down at Lingfield last night over the mile and a half, the horse pouring it on late on, it's easy to see why, given especially Sir Mark Prescott's form has turned around since the middle of last week, that this horse is the twos on favourite. Knight Commander second best for Roald de Silva and Steve Fluck at six to one. Bird for life. Mark Usher turned up with Ellie McKenzie. They're at ten to one. Kitty's Cove at sixteens. Pepper Street at 20 alongside Yes Sir. And it's 25 to 1 because they made a 6 and 9 don't go. A field of 11 and we're three minutes to post. There is the market lead up for Sir Mark Prescott, who, as we say, the last seven days has really had a turnaround in his fortunes. Four winners have late taken his strike rate up to 22%. And this horse actually ran at Lingfield when this table weren't going quite so well. Let's have a look back to that run. Finished fifth in the end, beaten two and a half lengths behind Glutton for punishment. You'll see Monfrier, the poor Moir Colt, towards the back of the field here. Now, the camera's probably quite rightly focused in on the lead as we lose that uh, white and black jacket towards the back of the field. But as they come towards the line, he appears back in shot again, having stayed on remarkably well through the closing stages. And three goes and made in a novice company last year. There he goes, disappears out of the screen. But he will reappear, having stayed on strongly down the home stretch. There he is to finish in fifth place overall. Was a 20 to 1 chance on that occasion. Reappears today, stepping up in distance off a pound lower mark. And Luca Morris on board here for Sir Mark Prescott, a Colt by Paul Moir. Knight Commander say he is uh, second best. Also has gone well here in the past as well. I wonder, Simon, that Monfrier say eye-catching last time out at, uh, at Lingfield, and presumably, given it's trained by the man, it is trained by. That's why it's uh, it's trading quite as short as it is. Yeah, I agree completely. And you know, Sir Mark's horses really have hit form with a vengeance. But I, I think the interesting point to grapple with here about this horse, Martin, is this 15 pound weight for age allowance, which a lot of people will feel at this stage of the season, you know, we're halfway through July now, that the uh, the the old traditional, and it is a, a traditional matrix really, uh, is quite generous uh, towards the, the younger generation. Not everyone agrees with that. I certainly uh, like to work on the principle that certainly as you get into August and September, I think these uh, these big weight for age allowances in staying races in particular, uh, I, I think are, are, are massively uh, weighted in favour of the younger generation. It doesn't always work out that way, but I think if you've got a, a horse that, that looks progressive and is beginning to get on the improve, then uh, to exploit this kind of opportunity against older horses, especially down at this kind of level, I think uh, is uh, is often a real plus. Now, uh, this horse here, Mon Frere, son of Derby winner Paul Moir, looks as though he's ready to begin improving, almost at the basement level. It's a 46 to 60 handicap, this. It's a very low grade race. And, you know, he really is a typical Sir Mark Prescott horse, very much the hallmark of, of Sir Mark uh, over the years. And we'll see how he goes today. Don't want to give him too much of a big build-up, but if he does take advantage, uh, as the odds suggest he should, then you'd have to think that he's the type of horse who could go on and, and rack up a sequence as he moves through the rankings, such is uh, his, his opening mark. So that is Monfrey. Incredibly short price, isn't he, in this, this handicap? Two to one on. 
And up against him in the market is Knight Commander. I think he could be the pace angle. Round of silver rides for Steve Fluke. Just having a look through these earlier on, and I couldn't really see many who uh, were likely to go forward. A lot of these horses like to be weighted with. Sometimes, uh, over the, the staying trips around here, you can get a, a falsely run race. So I really hope that something like Knight Commander does go on and just puts a nice even tempo to proceedings. By the way, I had a chat with the clerk of the course, Fergus Cameron, a few moments ago, and uh, those first races, I think, pretty consistent with his appraisal of the track in these warm conditions. It's fractionally on the slow side compared to his average times, but we are talking small fractions here, nothing hugely significant. Monfrey now 4-9 to nine on the off here at Wolverhampton for Sir Mark Prescott and his stable jockey, Luke Morris. Can he take advantage? Watch out for him coming from stall one in the white colours of Elite Racing. Set to go now. They're off and racing. Jumping away, Monfred begins adequately towards the far side. One of the first to show. Knight Commander's just gone past him, though. So, too, is just another idea as Monfred just drops back to fifth or sixth into the first bend now as they sort themselves out with the leader now being Garacha going on with Pepper Street. Garacha. Pepper Street from the wide draw, Amata Sandoz on the wide outside of those, followed by just another idea who's on their heels. Knight Commander races next and then Mood for Mischief. And now it's seventh place for Mon Frere as they turn on towards the far side for a first time. Kitty's Cove in behind that one. Then Yazir, the 11 year old ahead of Bird for Life. And last of all is Uncle Bernie as they continue to make their way down the far side of the race course here. In this, the third race of the night, the Helleman Teton Starrett handicap, and now they're making their way towards the end of the back straight with the lead held by Goracha. Goracha showing up in the hoop jacket, and they now make their way out of the back straight with uh, Omata Sando in second place and Pepper Street third. Just another idea, fourth, followed by Knight Commander to the inside. Monfrey, sixth place now, next to Mood for Mischief and ahead of. Bird for Life and Kitty's Cove and also Yassir, that back marker still is Uncle Bernie as they now race on with just over a mile and a quarter left to go. So down the straight they come for a second time and together the two leaders on the rail Garacha out slightly wider is Omota Sando and then they're tightly grouped in behind with Pepper Street and a move now from Bird for Life. Bird for Life given her head on the outside. She takes third place. Just another idea. Still close up. A line of three behind them. Mood for Mischief as they enter the final mile of the race is alongside favorite Monfrey. And after Monfrey is Knight Commander. And the back few include Kitty's Cove as they swing away from us. She's just in front of Yassir and the back marker still is Uncle Bernie. Less now than seven furlongs to run. Still pretty tightly grouped up here. Omota Sando comes through to lead as they swing away towards the far side of the track for a second and final time. Omota Sando leading up from in second place, Guracha, third for Bird for Life. Fourth place then is just another idea, Pepper Street towards the inside running rail. Up on the outside is Mood for Mischief, still being pursued by Monfrey. Monfrey still in seventh. Just for the first time, we see Luke Morris ask for a bit more effort from Monfrey. Behind him, Knight Commander, and then Kitty's Cove, Uncle Bernie, and the back marker is now Yassir. Well, Monfrey doesn't seem to be going terrifically well here, uh, but still in with uh, a shout in fifth or sixth place to the outside. Bird for Life with the advantage from Amata Sando. Then in behind those, Guracha, who is joined now by Mood for Mischief on the wide outside. Monfrey in fifth place. And Luke Morris just having to bide his time as uh, runners ahead of him, just under, under a bit of pressure. From the back, Uncle Bernie, the grey, has made good progress. Amata Sando now drops right away from them and is clearly beaten. Pepper Street likewise, but it's Bird for Life. And Ellie McKenzie with a clear lead over the field. And the favourite in trouble in third place. This is Bird for Life. This is one bird who looks to have flown as Yassir makes good progress down the outside. Monfrey has been very disappointing, but Bird for Life romps to an easy win. Garacha probably just second from Yassir and Monfrey. Kitty's Cove came next. Well, Bird for Life, impressive here. 
for Mark Usher and young Ellie McKenzie. Mon frere bitterly disappointing, but let's give Ellie full marks because she made a crucial move mid-race, just sensed that she needed to be a little bit closer to the pace, and by doing that, she was in a perfect position as they turn for home at the top of the stretch. A horse who certainly knows how to win and has been running consistently well, a good second at, uh, at Kempton just recently. That was over two miles off a similar mark again here today and uh, she wasn't hanging it about she uh, she took the race rather by the scruff of the neck at the top of the stretch got away from them and the break she had on the field in the end proved to be crucial and decisive uh, some credit as well to Garacha who did well to plug on and I think held on for second in the end in the hands of Ian Kieran Fallon who of course is flying on the crest of a wave after uh, his treble uh, just yesterday and Mon Frere, what can we say about this horse? Just hit a bit of a flat spot as they came out of the back straight. Uh, nevertheless, came a little bit, you could say came back onto the bridle to, to some extent, but at that point the winner had flown and Mon Frere, who's missed out on the placings here, has run on at the rather at the one pace. Yassir in the end was the horse that pipped the favourite for third place. Yeah, Mon Freya is either not very good or just very slow and wants even further, but uh, really disappointing. So Mark Prescott, though, with two more chances still to come on that card tonight. Bird for Life, who was second in the same race as 12 months ago at Kempton last time, strikes here at 9-1. to one. Garacha in second at 40, and Yassir was third at 20-1. to one. That was action from Wolverhampton. More to come.